I find it so amazing on uh, one of the channels on TV, they have an expose, who was Jesus? You know that National Geographic uses the Bible for the outlay of Israel and all the surrounding cities. They still use it today. They say it's one of the most comprehensive books of maps that outline for them today in the 21st century. They still use it to find the old towns and the old villages. And they do it in expose. Who is Jesus? Did he really live? According to them, he didn't because they can't find his bones. But that's the point. <laughs> you see, sometimes they can't find his grave. They, they say this was the grave that they say he was in. But they can't find his bones. They can find Muhammad's bones, Buddha's bones. I don't know who else's bones. The fish's bones, I don't know. They find the dinosaur's bones. Jesus is nowhere to be found on this earth. But if they want to see his bones, they can come knock on me. Because he's in me. Do you know that he dwells within you? You see, this is the confusion with the world. They can't understand that. The Bible says that it's the gospel that is the foolishness to those that don't understand. Because they're looking in their natural flesh. They're looking at this guy. They're looking at you. They're going, this dude's crazy, man. He loves someone he's never met. He loves someone he can't touch. The physicality of Jesus is not there. But let me ask you, who's been touched by Jesus? The world looks at you and goes, you cuckoo. Praise God. I was born for this. The only difference between them and me is I realized, <laughs> hey, I need Jesus. Can you imagine they crucify Jesus? The men run away. Imagine, imagine, imagine doing that to your friend, how, what it would ma make you feel like. But it, there was a purpose for them to run away. Because if they were there, they would have tried to stop it. But Jesus knew this had to happen for you. Can you imagine Mary? You need to go back to that time and understand the religious mindset that was in that village. Woman had no place. Woman had to be silent. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and then on that faithful morning, Mary, little Mary, comes there and sees the empty tomb. First evangelist on the planet, a woman. Do you know what they did to the religious mindset in that village? Do you know that the Sadducees and the Pharisees would have had her whipped and beaten and killed because she chose to speak the word of God? They were not allowed to. Empty tomb, he is risen. She ran back to the disciples. I see some of these young ladies when they talk to me, they go, Pastor Kenneth, Pastor Kenneth, I said, I can't hear you talk louder. Pastor Kenneth, sir. Do you think she ran to the disciples and said, Guys, guys, <laughs> he's risen. <laughs> she ran on the top of her voice shouting, He's risen! <laughs> he's alive! <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine my wife, Auntie Dot, shouting that? Listen, when you come to that place and you have a revelation that Jesus is alive, you will shout it from the mountaintops. You will go where you go and you will speak his word. You know this thing where we sit on the fence? Sometimes we sit on the fence. What is that fence? It's not an offense, but when you sit on the fence, you offend Almighty God. Either you're fully for him or you're against him. He says, if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out. That message will not be spoken in the church because I might offend you. 
then you and your wallet can leave. And then I'm very upset because your wallet left. <laughs> Listen, I'm sold out. The radical love that Jesus put on the cross for me, shed his blood, took the beating. The Bible says they ripped his beard from his face. Pastor Kenneth, it's too vicious. Don't talk about the blood. Listen, I'm radical for Jesus. I'm on a pastor's group. They told me to be more tolerant because somebody put some political nonsense on there and I lambasted them. They said, Pastor Kenneth, you must be more tolerant. I said, that's what's wrong with our world today. We are tolerant. That's why our world is falling apart. We're tolerant. He died with a radical love and I will bring a radical message till my last breathing day. And I pray that for you. I pray that on your life. I cannot be silent. I can't. Praise God, one other person. <laughs> My radical love. I love you so much that I'll tell you the truth. I love you so much that when I see you falling, I will tell you you're falling. I love you so much that when I see you in sin, I will tell you you're sinning. Pastor Kenneth, you're judgmental. No. I love you so much, I don't want to see you go to hell. I want to see my friends there. I want to see my family there. I want to see my neighbors there. The hobo that I sit on the pavement with, I want to see him there. Radical love. Poured out. Every drop, every ounce of blood for you. Praise God. He says this in Philippians 3.10. That I may know him. Matthew 7, if you read from 18 to 28, it says there, For those that didn't know him, he said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. This day, 2,000 years ago, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made comfortable, comfortable unto his death. Conformable, not comfortable. <laughs> It's my dyslexia acting up. Listen, he wants to know you. People say to me, Pastor Kenneth, I go into a time of prayer and I start to pray and all these other thoughts just come. Listen, don't stop seeking his face. Don't stop praying. Don't stop asking. But rest in him. You see, if you're going to start asking him, Father, you know those shoes I need? Please, I need those shoes, those shoes, those shoes. He's saying, just seek my face. Just look for me. Speak to me. Imagine every time you ran up to your father or mother, and all you ever did was ask him for stuff. And that's how we treat Jesus. We think we've got to ask him for all the little things. He says, I will take care of all your needs. Every single thing according to my riches and glory. He says, I take care of the birds of the field, the little grains of seed. I take care of all of that. How much more you as my sons and daughters will I not take care of you? So what do I pray for? I pray for my nation. I pray for my brothers and sisters that they might be strengthened. How do I pray? In the power of the resurrection. Lord Jesus, your blood on my family. Thank you, Lord. You need to pray that. You need to pray that. I woke up this morning when I was 16 years old. A long time ago, and I don't have a good memory of my childhood. But I remember drawing this picture, and I think I still got it. I said, they're solid as a rock. And the Lord reminded me, he said, when you were 16, you were following me. And you wrote there, solid as a rock. He said to me this morning, he said, imagine the biggest diamond that you could ever imagine. There's a rock that has got so much more value. He said, so many young ladies want the rock on the finger, the wedding, the big diamond. He says, but I am the rock of the ages. I am that rock that you're seeking. The Bible see, says this, that he is a rock of offense to those that do not know him. The world is offended by Jesus. 
When you mention God, let's pray in the name of God, everybody will bow. Mention Jesus, you will offend them. That's an offense. You see, a truth brings offense. When you speak truth, people get offended. If I lie and tickle your ears, it's cool, man. You're all going to be good. It's going to be good. You're going to make big money. Just give me your 10%. It's all good. As long as you're tithing, you're okay. It's in the church. It's a lie. It's a lie. Simon Peter, that denied Jesus. The Bible says that his name Simon means listener. That means Simon listened intently. But yet he denied Jesus three times. When Jesus gave him the, the opportunity to repent three times, the Bible says he gave him a new name and he said, Upon this rock, Peter, will I build my church. Upon this rock, Sandra, I will build this church. Upon this rock, Miranda, I will build my church. Upon this rock, Kenneth, I will build my church. Because they are full, they will have the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I will use them for my glory. Put your name in there. Hada the rock. My mother's real name is Pietra the rock. Louis Petronella Germalhanus <laughs> the rock. That rock is priceless. You are priceless. The Bible says they rolled away the stone from the door, the empty tomb. The empty tomb. Can you imagine seeing those swaddling clothes the, the, that he was wrapped in like a mummy? He went through that stuff without having to be cut out. They found a cloth. The Catholics keep it. It's a cloth. It's got a face of Jesus on. We don't know if that is what it is, but I'm telling you there it was. Whether they got the original or a copy, I'm telling you that it existed. I have no doubt in my mind. Pastor Kenneth, you were never there. In my spirit, I know. You see, when people start to argue with me about the gospel, I don't want to argue anymore. I just want to go there and say, Jesus loves you. Let me pray for you. Let me set you free. Bring healing deliverance. Yeah, but I don't believe in the Bible. It's such an old book. That's exactly the case. 6,000 years of prophetic words, 6,000 years of 66 books of 40 authors, all lining up over 2,000 years, the last four Gospels lining up. How can it be? It's God's word. I'm not going to argue with you because I know in my heart it's true. If you don't want to receive it, I feel sorry for you. I'll pray for you. National Geographic, looking for the bones of Jesus. Them bones, them bones, them rusty bones. <laughs> the youngsters won't know that song. 1 Peter 2 verse 4 says this. Come to him, the risen Lord, as a living stone, which men rejected and threw away. But which is the choice in the precious sight of Almighty God? You choose. Let me ask you this. Have you ever thought? I think this often. Maybe my mind's a bit twisted. Imagine if you were Almighty God. Would you take the nonsense of these people? Man, I'll destroy them quick, quick. I will destroy you. You disrespect me. I will destroy you. Say something against me. I will destroy you. Put me on a cross. I will call the angels to come and pounce on you. And Jesus could have done that. But he chose. He said no. A living sacrifice. Once and for all. Done. Finished. Dusted. Complete. The fullness of Jesus Christ. If you go and study the history books. There's an amazing man. He hated Jesus. He wrote about Jesus. 
he said to his son, stay away from this man. Because when they crucified him, the sky turned black and there was an earthquake. I don't like him. Stay away from him. What? And those people that don't believe in Jesus, because this guy hated him so much, he actually wrote about it. 2,000 years ago, here's this historian writing about Jesus, not in the Bible, another book, another transcribe. History tells you that Jesus walked. The Muslims believe Jesus walked on this planet. The Krishnas believe it. The Hindus believe it. The Christians have a revelation of it. He is alive today. He is alive. He is risen. He is risen. Can you imagine if you understood who it is that lives in you? A little child came. He couldn't understand. They said, how does Jesus fit in you? Is there a little cutout in your heart? You see, when I say I'm the fullness of Jesus, some people might say, yo, that guy thinks he's something, eh? Listen, I'm nothing without him. I'm zip. I have nothing without him. Paul said, I count all things before Christ as dung. I can't use the other word. As rubbish. For the little boys here, cow poo poo. He says, I count it as cow dung, the things that I had before Christ Jesus. Everything as rubbish. I was that rubbish. He came, washed me clean, set me free, delivered me from an evil mindset. He is the one. His name is Jesus. The Jews call him Yeshua Hamasiach. They say he's still coming. We say he already arrived. He's coming a second time. You better get it right. Please do not mix my Jesus with politics. Because people in our country are using it to get votes. You're treading on very, very thin ice. My Jesus is not a politician. He is the king. He commands and demands. You do not vote Jesus in. So let me ask you this question. This is what confuses religious mindsets. How do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? It starts with the virgin birth. Jesus born. Fast forward 33 years, Jesus crucified. Three days later, risen. Without the resurrection, it is just a religion. If you cannot believe that Jesus rose physically, it is just a religion. There are religions out there that say this was just a spiritual thing that happened. So you only, you know, there's no hell, don't worry, just live like you live. Listen, every single day, it's a battle for me to say, Father, I want to live clean. I need my mindset clean. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to look at these things. And there's so much media just pouring out stuff that's trying to pull me away. Pastor Kenneth, how can you battle with that stuff? I know what you battle with because I battle with the same things. But I have my Jesus that is constantly every single day saying, my son, come, come. We, we can do this thing together. It is I that strengthen you. The Bible says when we are weak, he is strong. When we have infirmities and troubles and calamities, it is there where he is. You are never alone. The Bible says, Jesus said, it is finished. The Holy Spirit flooded the earth. With his presence. What is the Holy Spirit? It's the Spirit of Jesus. It's the Spirit of Almighty God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one. 
One person. You see, I'm a son. But I can also be a father. And I'm also a spirit. One person, not three. So the Holy Spirit brings a revelation of Jesus. When you receive the Holy Spirit, this book, the Bible, starts to come alive. When he said, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand, and the kingdom of God is within you. That means everything that is in heaven and earth is in your power within yourself. Pastor Kenneth, that's hectic stuff. Do you know the power you have in your mouth? Do you know the power when you hold someone's hand and say, I bless you in the name of Jesus and believe it? Guess what? This little girl, the shortest one here, has the same power in her as in me. She just has to have a revelation of that. She just has to stand up and say, let me speak the word of God here in this place or that place and something will happen. You see, as I'm speaking... The Bible says it will be rivers of life coming out of my belly, flowing here. The difference is this. Some people receive it. Some people stand with the wall and say, oh, this guy's nuts. I want to challenge you. What is there this morning that the river of life has to wash over you, through you, under you, over you, cleanse you, set you free? Is there something? If not, praise God. I'm going to read 1 Peter 2 verse 4 from the Amplified Bible. Now for the visitors here, I want to tell you, this is my mom, you can speak to her, eyewitness. Imagine having an eyewitness to everything you've done. It's my eyewitness. She eyewitnessed me doing a lot of stuff. One of the things she witnessed me doing was not able to read. I couldn't read. The Lord healed me. Come to him, the risen Lord. As to a living stone which men reject and threw away. But which is a choice, a precious and a precious sight to Almighty God. You believers... Like a living stone, being built unto a spiritual house for a holy, dedicated priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifice that are acceptable and pleasing to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. One way to the Father, through Jesus Christ. There's religions like Oprah Winfrey. She teaches as long as you pray to the light, all roads lead to the light. Jesus is the only light. The other light is a counterfeit because the Bible says that even Satan himself parades himself as light because the devil wants to be like Jesus. So he parades himself as light. But my God is the light. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the only way. For this gospel, people are dying today. There were six churches this morning that were blowing up in Sri Lanka because they're preaching this gospel. Verse 6. For this is contended in the scripture and contained therein. Behold, I am laying in Zion a chosen stone, a precious, honored cornerstone. And he who believes in him who adheres to him, he who trusts in him, and he who relies on him, will never be disappointed in his expectations of Almighty God. Do you trust him? Now let me confess, it's not always easy. When things are getting tough, when there's sickness, illness, disease, death, sometimes you might ask, my God, where are you? The fact is this, you're speaking to him. That means you've got faith and trust in him. It would be crazy to say, the day you give yourself over to the Lord Jesus Christ, everything is sorted. It's the opposite. He said there will be persecutions. They will take you and put you in jail for my sake. 
They will hate you for Jesus. This precious value then, verse 7, is for you who believe in him as God's only son. The source of salvation. The very, very foundation and source of salvation. But to those who believe, the very stone which the builders reject has become the chief cornerstone. How solid are you in Jesus? How solid do you believe? Is there a doubt? I've had doubts. There's been days where I said, Lord, where are you? He comes through every single time. And sometimes he comes through on the last second of the last moment. At the time where you think you're going to give up, my Jesus comes through. And verse 8, a stone of stumbling, the stumbling rock of offense. For the stumbling, because they disobeyed the word of God, and it is unto thine who was also appointed, who rejected his own Savior. Listen to this. I teach the little kids this. The little ones on a Saturday. I teach them. We continue to sing that song. We do not give up. We teach them this. Because of this day, you are a chosen race. Not white, not black, not Indian, not colored, not pink like me. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a species, a people for God's own possession. You know what the Lord, the word Lord means? It's Adonai in the Hebrew, which means owner. He owns you. Don't you think he will take care of you? A royal priesthood, a possession of Almighty God, so that you may proclaim the excellence, the wonderful deeds, the virtues, and the perfections of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. His light. He is the light. He is the light. He says, Go and shine my light. Once you were not a people. If you don't know Jesus, you are a nothing. You are not a people at all, but now you are God's chosen race, God's chosen people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received his mercy because of this cross and this resurrection. Child of God, do you know who you are? It's time. It's time to know and understand that you have the power of this living God. The Bible says... The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives within each of you. Pastor Kenneth, I don't know if I can do that. Verse 11, beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to this world. The world must look at you and say, hey, this one is not from here. He's a maquera quera from heaven. To abstain from sensual urges, those dishonorable desires that wage war in your soul. They wage within me, I know it. And they wage within you, I know it. The difference is this, I don't let it get me down. I take every step every day. Jesus, I'm with you. I'm walking in you. Show me, guide me. Do I get it right every time? No. But then I go back to the cross and I say, Father, grace and mercy is poured out on me. Next day I get up and I say, Lord Jesus, I'm walking in your spirit. Let's go. The difference between you and I is some people, they say, I'm not going to go, I'm going to let go. Cling to him every day. Cling to the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ every single day. It will change your life. For those of you that knew me before, my mother, my wife, there might be a few of you here. You can see the resurrection power in me. I can see it. Sometimes I sit there and I say, my God, how can you use me? Do you know what I've done? He says, my resurrection power is in you. I've set you free. 
see, maybe if I stood up here in a black cloak with a white dark collar and a purple robe, you might receive my message. I don't know. Maybe the way I look in this guy's nuts, let me be blamed for being nuts for Jesus. Let me be blamed to be a Jesus freak. Let them point fingers and say, this guy, I can't talk to him because all he speaks about is Jesus. Everybody, close your eyes for a moment. My God, you poured out every drop of blood for me. The greatest thing that ever happened to me, my God, was the day I realized you love me. Was the day I realized that I can walk with the spirit of almighty God raging within me. The day I realized I can set people free by forgiving them. The day I realized that if I open my heart to you, the pain and hurt and suffering and, and disappointments in my heart just disappear. The day I realized that when I've got issues, I can go to my father and say, Father, I need. And you say, my son, it's taken care of. I think of Mary running, running to the disciples, so excited. He's risen. He's alive. Pastor Kenneth, I can't see him. Look at me. Look at the person next to you. They're full of him. You just haven't realized it. You just haven't taken notice. Look around you. Look at the people that are loving you. Why do they love you? Because Jesus is there. Young man, young woman, do not despair. The Lord says, I know the challenges you have, but I will take you from glory to glory. I am with you. I will never leave you. Never forsake you. Because I am the risen God. I am the risen King. I am everything you need. Father, I know there's hearts in this place. And you're knocking. You're saying, this is what I've been speaking to you about, my son. My daughter, this is it. This is it. This is the moment that your life will be transformed, renewed, shaken. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh, Lord. I pray that every single person here start to experience what I experience when you speak to my heart, my King. The rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, my solid rock, upon which I stand. That rock has never been moved, never been shaken. It is in the same place it was 2,000 years ago, waiting for you to say, I need you as my rock, my salvation in life. I praise you, King Jesus. Pastor Neil, can you come up, please? I had this song in my heart this morning. I don't know if I'll do it justice, but this is my song in my heart this morning. He says, He is risen, He is risen, and He reigns forevermore. Come on and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Father, we celebrate your resurrection today. We as a nation, a Christian nation, are nothing without the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning I stand before you, Lord my God, a sinner saved by grace. 
A sinner that has the power of Almighty God flowing through his very veins because of grace and mercy. Bless you, King Jesus.